Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In this series, we have been talking about Islamic ethics and the Islamic ethical code uh, constitutes of many, many different attributes. A uh, Muslim uh, should always try and abide by all of the Islamic teachings described in the Holy Quran, Islamic teachings, uh, the uh, traditions of the Holy Prophet and the Ahlul Bayt There are tens, if not hundreds, of attributes that the Ahlul Bayt have described that a Muslim must contain. Um, in this episode, we will talk about ghiba, which is backbiting. Um, Islam has highly discouraged backbiting. Ghiba is to talk about a, a believing person in their absence of uh, a deed or an action or a, um, a characteristic uh, um, uh, or description uh, that they contain. Uh, and if, you, if they hear you say it, they may dislike it. And that is riba. That is the definition of riba, backbiting. So in their absence, you say something that they may dislike. There, are, uh, there is an ayat in the Holy Quran, if I'm not mistaken, in Surah Hujarat, it says that, uh, uh, Please, one of you should not backbite the other. Uh, would you like to eat, would you ever like to eat the uh, flesh of your own brother, Islamic brother? That is how badly uh, uh, Islam sees um, backbiting. It is just like eating the flesh of your uh, dead um, uh, believing brother. And we are highly discouraged to backbite anyone. If a person is fighting, if a person is fasting and they backbite another person, then their reward is taken away from them. Uh, in an ethical book, it says that the Holy Prophet heard two women backbite and he said to them that you have uh, broken your fast. And she said, no, Ya Rasulullah, Messenger of Allah, I'm still fasting. He said, no, you have broken your fast. She said, but I haven't. So he said to someone, bring a utensil and he said to her to to vomit and when she vomited there was a flesh uh, as if she had eaten a, a piece of meat and she said I didn't eat that and so he said well this is the piece of meat that you ate because of backbiting now this is a, an example and a metaphor because he was a miraculous personality so he showed her um, what it does the backbiting does to you um, in fact we only backbite people who we do not wish good for, uh, but we are doing the opposite. We are benefiting them by when we backbite them, then our good deeds are transferred to them. And because our deeds are transferred to them, then we are losing out and they are still benefiting. So we should not backbite other people uh, because it destroys no one but us. When you are jealous of people, that's when you do it. And when you hold a grudge, that's when you are jealous of people. So you should try and control yourself so you don't backbite a person. Um, in the description of the Islamic teachings, uh, backbiting is uh, to usually destroy the reputation of that person. So you disclose their evil deeds or the things that you know about them. When the infallible was describing to the people that do not say bad things about people, so a person stood up and said, um, things they have or things they do not have, he said, things they do not have, and you say about them, that's slander. Uh, that is tuhma, that is ittiham. Uh, but ghiba and backbiting is when they contain, they do have that negative uh, um, uh, attribute or uh, a quality, and you disclose it to the others. Um, but also one must remember that backbiting does not apply if you advise another person who may be um, tricked by the same person that you've been tricked by. So they may be uh, their position, that someone may be abusing their position. Then you can disclose their evil deed to the others. But even that contains a condition. You should only and only disclose the, uh, the attribute that will affect the person you are describing to, not everything about them. Uh, there are also traditions that say that if you know something evil about someone, if you cover it, if you hide it, then Allah will 
hide many of your sins because he is Sattarul Uyub. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala covers all of the evil deeds of human beings. So if we cover the evil deeds of other people, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cover our evil deeds. So we should not be disclosing the evil deeds of other people um, to anyone. We should leave it uh, for Allah to decide what he does for them. If they repent, then Allah forgives them. If they do not, then they'll be punished either in this world or the hereafter. But certain sins have punishment in both worlds, in this world and the hereafter. Ghiba is something which is extremely negative in Islamic teachings. And uh, Imam Ali -Islam says that a person cannot backbite uh, until and unless there is uh, a second person who is listening to the backbiting. So if you stop the other person and say, hang on, I do not wish to listen to what you uh, are saying to me, meaning I do not wish to listen to the backbiting, then the person will not be able to backbite. So that way you will stop uh, two sins, one for that person to backbite and one you will stop yourself from sinning uh, or by listening to uh, a backbiting. So one should not listen to any backbiting. And if there are people who are backbiting and you cannot stop them, then at least you should not listen, you should get up and leave. Uh, it has many, many bad effects. Uh, Shaheed, uh, Shaheed Mihrab, Shaheed uh, Sayyid Abdul Hussain the Saghib Shirazi in his book uh, says, Abdunub al Kabira or Gunahan al Kabira, the major sins. He says that when a person backbites, then all the angels that are present in that environment um, uh, feel suffocated because of the bad smell that comes out of that backbiting. Just as bad smell uh, disturbs us, it also disturbs the, the angels. We may not be able to uh, sense, smell or feel the bad smell that is in the environment because of our backbiting, but the angels can smell it and they sense it because um, the angels are spiritual beings, you know, they are made of light and therefore all of our spiritual good deeds and bad deeds have, uh, have effects, they have a shape, they have a form, they have a smell good or bad. So your prayers um, turn into light and they have good smell and they rise to the heavens. And the backbiting has bad smell and it is evil and it forms a uh, texture in the environment that the angels feel disgusted with. So we should try and control our tongue. Uh, in olden days many of the companions used to keep stones in their mouth and when asked why do you keep stones in the mouth they said we are always either backbiting, slandering or uh, abusing other people, cursing other people. So therefore we try and keep some stones so we don't backbite other people. It has levels. Sometimes you backbite a person and uh, giving a full description of everything that you have seen or know. And sometimes you only intend to harm them uh, by uh, destroying their name or uh, their good uh, their good name or their reputation uh, and sometimes it is so descriptive that you uh, want to harm them in the in the worst way possible sometimes you conceal uh, information about people you know that they are good but you conceal it and you say I don't know about them and that gives a bad impression that is almost equal to backbiting so if you know something good about someone and uh, then only reveal the good things and do not reveal the, the evil things about them. Um, and that way Allah will always remember the good things about you and will forgive your evil deeds. We should remember uh, that our Holy Prophet وسلم, and the Halil Bayt wasalam, have described in so many traditions that the punishment for the backbiting is severe in the hereafter. And many times you may be punished in this world um, for the backbiting you have done, but it causes the squeezing of the grave. Sheikh Abbas Aqumi in his Manazil al Akhira says there are three causes of the squeezing of the grave. When a person is buried in the grave, uh, many times they feel as if um, they have been squeezed by the earth and their brain comes out of their toes. That's how badly the earth squeezes them. And when the, uh, Sheikh Abbas Aqumi says that when the Imams were asked, what should we do that we are not punished in the grave through squeezing? So he says that the Ayma salam said there are three sins one must refrain from um, and one of them is 
Ariba, one of them is backbiting. So if you refrain from backbiting, then you will not have the squeezing of the grave. The other is uh, cleaning yourself properly after using the washroom, tahara. And the third is uh, refraining from arrogance. So riba is something that causes so many uh, punishments um, in this world, in the grave and in the hereafter, after the grave, on the Day of Judgment. It is extremely important that we learn to control our tongue. If you cannot say something nice about someone, then do not say something bad about them. And many times people, when they are uh, saying bad things, then, uh, then try and stop them. Say that, please do not backbite a person. Sometimes when you say that, that may prove that it is true. It is uh, because backbiting is that giving a, uh, uh, you know, it is saying the truth about someone but it is not good. So saying something false is not backbiting. So saying something truth about someone is backbiting. So sometimes it proves to the other people that yes, it is true, and that's why it is backbiting. But sometimes you say, please do not say bad things about other people, or do not backbite, or say it in a respectful way that uh, they stop from their sin, and you are being respectful. Do not be disrespectful when saying to a person that do not backbite. Um, and uh, that way, uh, they will uh, get the lesson and they will uh, stop from uh, a sin and also in a respectful way. Uh, uh, there's a tradition that says, Al mu'minu mir'atul mu'min. A mu'min, a believing person, is the mirror of another believing person. So, in a mirror, um, you never hear the mirror speak to you. Uh, the mirror says the truth to you without speaking to you, and that's how a believing person should be with the other. Without uh, speaking to them publicly, you should convey to them uh, in, uh, you know, take them aside and say, do not say those things. This is not good. Uh, it will only destroy uh, their reputation and yours because people will think that you always talk bad about other people and they will be careful with you. They will not open up to you. They will not ever be uh, friendly with you. So winning friends over means that you do not backbite them, you do not destroy your relationship with them. And uh, it is a quality that not only uh, makes enemies for you, but it is also something that makes you uh, 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 unwanted and um, disliked amongst other people because people do not like to listen. You know, once or twice they may... Um, they may uh, listen to you, but after a while they will say he's, he's always negative, he's always portraying people in a negative way, he's always disclosing or she's always uh, disclosing evil deeds of other people and never praising anyone and they have nothing nice to say about others. So it is important that we uh, do not backbite others. Finally, I would like to describe to you that um, uh, when you backbite others, it says a lot about you. There may have been many good qualities in that person which you have ignored and you've only remembered the, the bad qualities. On a piece of paper, if there is only one small black mark on a white paper and you pick it up and you show it to the people and they say, oh, there is a black mark on it. What is this uh, black mark? Then you know that th this is negativity, that they only see the black mark on that white paper. They don't see the whole big white paper. It is a white paper that is in front of you, not the black mark. It is always good to remember positive aspects of a person's life. Negative things make you a negative person. It generates negative energy in you. Positive talk will generate positive energy and a successful person. We should try and not only uh, obtain good qualities, but also describe good qualities of other people. Thank you very much for listening. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.